Hey everybody, Mrs. Bixler here, and we are on to Unit 6, woohoo! Triangle Inequalities, which is super exciting, um, and as you can tell from uh, the homework the other night, where you had to learn the three theorems on your own, it's pretty straightforward, right? A lot of this is common sense, um, so hopefully you just find this like a really fun, quick unit um, that's challenging, but uh, still exciting and good. All right, here we go. Um, I wanted to review those first three theorems that you did on your own uh, for homework. So the first one, let's look at the triangle on the left-hand side. So given the information that you have there, what can you deduce about the sides of triangle ABC? Pause the video and then come back to me. All right, we're back. So the first thing you got to figure out is you know that your missing angle here is going to be 75 degrees. You know that the largest angle is always across from the largest side. So you know that BC has to be your largest side. So hopefully you figured out this. All right, now I want you to pause the video and on the right hand side, check out that triangle and figure out what you can use about those angles of uh, triangle DEF. Go for it. All right, we're back. So hopefully you figured out that five is the largest side, so it's got to be opposite the largest angle. Two is the smallest side, so it's got to be opposite the smallest angle. Four is in the middle. So hopefully you figured out this. Now, word to the wise, from the wise. Be careful here with your angle uh, little notation, right? Make sure that when you draw an angle that you put the little loop-dee through it because there's going to be greater than signs and less than signs and it gets a little confusing. So make sure you're really aware of uh, calling something an angle and not saying it's less than E. I don't know what that means, right? Um, or greater than E. So anyway, all right, here we go. Last theorem. So this third theorem that you learned um, on your own was all about being given two sides of a triangle and trying to find that missing third side. So if you had a bunch of different options here um, to fill in this triangle, so I've got a side length of five and a side length of 10, those are set. What is not set is this angle at which the five and the 10 meet, right? I don't know anything about my angles. I just know about the side lengths. So if you're looking at all the different options here, let's say I pick two just because it's the smallest. If I pick two over here, even if I take this side length of five and I angle it like this and I put it all the way down and then I take this two and I angle it whoop, like this and I bring it all the way down, do you see how it doesn't even match up with 10? There's no way that I can make a triangle that has a side length of two and a side length of five and a side length of 10. There's just no way. So let me group and get these guys back together, fab. All right, so the same thing's true for four, right? If I bring four over here, the same thing is true, where if I take this angle right here and make it as small as possible, and then I take this kind of like hinge angle up here, wherever five is meeting with that third side, um, if I make that as large as possible, there's no way that I could have um, a triangle that has a side length of five, a side length of four, and then a side length of 10. Because if I straighten up five and four, they're just gonna make nine. And so there's no way that I can make a 10 up there. All right, so then what about this little guy? What about if I had a side length of five? So same thing here, let's think about this. I'm going to make this angle as small as possible here essentially a straight line, and I'm gonna drag this five over. Shoot, my five and my five meet up and they make the exact same length as 10. And so that's not gonna make a triangle either. So my only option here is this side of six. Because remember, I don't have any restrictions in terms of what my angles can be. Um, and so all that matters is that I'm able to make a triangle, whoop, Whoop, there we go. Um, with side lengths that are going to be two side lengths that are going to be greater than the third side length. And so that is what our triangle inequality theorem is. The sum of two, some of the lengths of two sides of a triangle always has to be greater than that third side, always. So I'm going to give you a question here, super straightforward. Um, I want you to try and solve for X. What are all the possible values for what X can be? Pause the video and then come back. All right, so I know that the sum of two sides of a triangle has to be greater than the third side. So I'm just gonna walk through all the possibilities. I know that eight plus X has to be greater than 10. I also know that X 
plus 10 has to be greater than 8. And I know that 10 plus 8 has to be greater than x. So let's go through and solve and see my possibilities here. So if I solve this guy up, I get that x is going to be greater than 2. Here, I get that x is going to be greater than negative 2. So obviously that will happen, so I'm not too worried about that. And then for this one, I know that x has to be less than 18. So watch. You look at this number and you look at this number. What do you notice about those numbers and these two? Well, my friends, you know that x has to be less than the sum of those two side lengths, but it also has to be greater than the difference of those two side lengths. So really, there's an infinite number of possibilities. It doesn't have to be an integer. Um, and we could get an infinite number of possibilities between 2 and 18 um, for what x could be, as long as that third side is uh, greater than, or the sum of the two sides is greater than the third side, then you're golden. All right. So now we're going to scooch on to talking about inequalities in two triangles. And this stuff I love. So there are two cool theorems here. One is called the side angle side inequality theorem. So we've talked about SAS, right? Side angle side inequality theorem tells us if I have two triangles here, so triangle AQB and triangle uh, CED, so I know that AQ and CE are congruent. I know that QB and ED are congruent. So I know those two pieces of information. But my A here is that angle one is greater than angle two. So if I'm given information about two sides and an angle, so a side, an angle, and a side in two triangles, what am I able to deduce about those uh, remaining sides? So about AB and CD, pause the video and try and answer it yourself. All right, you can deduce that AB is going to be greater than CD, which makes sense, right? If I know that angle one is greater than angle two, the side opposite it has to be greater than the side opposite the other one. All right, so that's the side angle side inequality theorem. The side 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 inequality theorem. So for this one, you're given information about all three sides. So same situation here. I know that two pairs of corresponding sides are congruent, but I'm told that side AB is greater than side CD. So this is sort of the opposite of um, uh, kind of the converse a little bit of what we were told before. So now what can you deduce about angle one and angle two? Pause the video and then come back. All right, we're back. So hopefully you deduce that angle one is greater than angle two. Fab. Okay, so side angle side, you're told information about side angle and side, and side side side, you're told information about all three sides. Fab. All right, here we go. I want you to pause the video and try this one on your own. We're back. Let's try this guy. So first, you got to put all of your given information in the figure. So if I knew that D is the midpoint of AC, then I know this. And I know that the measurement of angle one is less than the measurement of angle two. Now, this is actually drawn so that it looks like the measurement of angle one is less than the measurement of angle two. Do not be fooled, though. There are going to be times where pictures are not uh, as they seem, and they are just telling you information. And so even if a side looks longer than another side, but they tell you one side's shorter than the other side, you got to take their word for it. So uh, for this one, tell me what you know about AB and BC. Pause the video. Okay, we're back. So you know that this is going to be a side angle side situation because you've got that nice little reflexive side, that shared side, BD. So you would know that AB is going to be greater than BC. Perfect. Okay, let's scooch on. So uh, for this one, I want you to pause the video and try and compare one and two. Okay, so let's look at this one. So you know that BC and DC are equal to each other, the, the measurements of those side lengths. And you also know that AC ba, 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 is congruent to itself because it's reflexive. Um, so now you know a little side, side, side situation because AB is larger than AD. Smaller. So if you know that AB is larger, then what do you know about angle one versus angle two? Angle one is going to be larger than angle two. 
perfect. All right, so one last sort of specific theorem I'm going to tell you about, um, and this is called the hinge theorem. The hinge theorem is just sort of a specific type of side angle side or side 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 theorem, and it happens when I have three line segments that are the same length, and I want to know information about either these two angles or these two sides. So I'm just going to say this is just to be boring, A, B, C, D. If I told you this information, so AB is congruent to BZ, which is congruent to BC, and I told you that angle one was greater than angle two, what would you know about AD and DC, those line segments? Well, you know that AD is going to be greater than DC. If I told you AB was congruent to BD, which is congruent to BC, all those line segments are congruent to each other, and I told you that uh, DC was greater than AD, well, if DC is greater than AD, then you know angle two is gonna be greater than angle one. Cool? Do you see how it's sort of a specific type of side angle side and side 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 um, theorem? And the reason why we call it a hinge theorem is because if you think about a door, so if you were in class today, uh, we'd, we'd go on a little road trip all the way to the door of the classroom. Um, and this is like the hinge of the door. And as the door opens wider and wider, right, as that angle gets bigger and bigger, the side opposite it gets larger and larger. So that's the hinge theorem for you. One more problem, I want you to pause the video and try and do this one on your own. Tell me what you know about angle five and angle four. All right, we're back, snooze. Hopefully you figured out that angle five is going to be greater than angle four. You got this, go crush the homework. I'll see you soon, thanks.